When we first uh, decided to have a conversation with regards to gender equity, a few of us met together and um, put a proposal together. And uh, when we first did a visit to IHQ at their IMC uh, with regards to Australia One, we made that paper part of the uh, presentation. And so I did the presentation at IHQ. Now the paper was long, had a few um, other uh, recommendations, but one of them was the gender equity advocate and plan. And so that was passed by IHQ IMC. And uh, we put in place a gender equity advocate who was Colonel Julie Campbell at the time. And uh, we thought she would sit at the highest level at that time because we were just starting out. And so either under the chief, but because her husband was the chief, she reported to the TC because we wanted people to take this seriously. We thought if we put it at a lower level, people would not take us seriously. And so Julie began putting a committee together, a working group together with uh, soldiers, um, officers, uh, uh, employees, and uh, we thought it was important to have external people on the committee as well because they come with expertise and experience that we do not have or did not have at the time. And I think it also gives us the opportunity at the time that they could challenge us in, in that uh, area of expertise. And so that took place. And uh, in the first part of the recommendation to us as a board was that we would have 30% male, 30% female uh, representation on, on boards. And, um, and uh, after a year, we uh, succeeded in that 30%. And so just in the last probably few months, uh, a recommendation came to the governance board suggesting that we up that to 40%. So they are now at the 40% mark. And uh, that is across all boards, uh, governance, um, cabinet, and all that, and uh, divisional leadership. And so if you look at the Australia Territory, they have six divisions. And out of those six divisions, three are women officer divisional commanders. And out of those three, two are married women officers. Also in that proposal to IHQ was, uh, we talked about default appointments. What does that look like going forward with regards to divisional leaders, territorial leaders, chief secretary, territorial secretary of your women's ministries. We couldn't go through all of the default appointments at that time because it's complex with um, the world in which we live and uh, what that looks like. But we were able to uh, recommend that as at a divisional level, that when we look at appointments for divisional leaders, that we look at each person individually. If the divisional commander is the male, the, uh, the spouse of the divisional commander, if married, doesn't automatically take the woman's role. They now have the opportunity to have a divisional role outside of women's ministry, but if they have a passion and a skill for women's ministries, then they can have that role um, if they would choose or like to. So out of the six divisions and out of the divisional leadership uh, roles, three women, two married women, have taken on divisional roles and one of the spouses have taken on the woman's role um, because she has a passion and a skill for that. So I think that's a big step for the Salvation Army and uh, we look forward to all that uh, lies ahead with regards to other default appointments.